Chairman, and I want to thank you all for being here today. This first question is, is, is for you, Dr. Matthews. Uh, in Councilman Dupree's uh, opening remarks, he talked about mobile health centers and how they could work very well in, in tribes that are remotely uh, located. Many in the West are. Um, there's a couple mobile units in Montana, and I'm sure we're not the only state to have some. Uh, are they fully staffed up? Do you know? I apologize, so I have to take that for the record. I, I am not sure. That'd be great. And then is do you know if they put priority, uh, and I'm not talking just Native American tribes, but to go out to the more frontier areas, which would, by the way, include every tribe in Montana, uh, <laughs> yeah. but it also includes some other areas too. Do you guys I, prioritize that? I, I would need to look at what the actual priorities race prioritization ranking would be. I know that we also use it for emergency management, so right. they have been deployed to hurricane zones yeah, and the yeah. like. Um, uh, but I can definitely get you that information. I, I think that information would be very, 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 very helpful I uh, because I think he makes a very good point. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in lieu of having a facility right there, um, yeah. that's uh, that's good. I, I just I do want to add on to the point that he talked about wanting to go to Miles City and the VA only going to, to offer him uh, mileage reimbursement for Glasgow. What really complicates this is Glasgow didn't have a doc or a nurse practitioner for five or six years. Now they've got a nurse practitioner. He's got a relationship with a doc in Miles City. And now we're saying we're not going to pay you if you go to Miles City anymore. You've got to change your, your, your home doctor and go to – we've got to make some allowances for that. And if you could take that down, if there's things we need to do in, in the Senate to do that, because I think home health is really important. And if you've got a doctor you like, uh, we had this debate during the ACA. We had this debate – uh, in the VA, uh, if you got a doctor you like, an IHS, you should be able to keep them, okay? Um, so um, I, I want to go over to both Councilman Dupree and, and, and Board Member Fox. Do you, feel like there, if, do you feel like there's an avenue in Indian country to give information back to the VA, not IHS, but VA, um, if they're not meeting the needs of your veterans and, and your in your specific reservations. Is there an avenue to give input back? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Justin. Appreciate it very much. Um, I, I believe there are avenues, but I don't think at this point in time they're effectively workable avenues as we sit today. Okay. I, that's, that's obvious by the lack of services that still remain out there in Indian country. Okay. But do I think that it's going to improve? I, I truly do. Yeah. Um, based upon what I've heard just yesterday and today, whether it's a meeting at the White House we had, and now, of course, today, that there's deliberate effort to expand those services and get them out there, and that's really what we need. Uh, but we are missing too many people right now. How about you, Councilman Dupree? How about your perspective? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Tester, thank you. Um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, communication, effective communi communication with the VA. Um, we have your office in Montana that we do effectively communicate quite often with, but uh, in terms of the VA, I'm not tracking any um, any person that really comes out um, and and says, hey, what, what what can we fix? How can we fix it? Um, from the VA headquarters office, we're about uh, eight and a half, nine hours away and do good driving weather. You, you, uh, so, so, that's good enough. Yep. So I bring this back to the question that I asked Secretary Wilkie and Dr. Stone, and that is, if there's not an avenue to give information back to the VA, it's pretty hard to think that there's an avenue to reach that 60% that never go to VA facilities. And my guess is it's probably not much different in Indian country than it is anywhere else in this country, that there's 60% of the people that either aren't aware of the services that are out there for them that have served, or they just have a different opinion of the VA than what really exists today. So if you could take some of that back, Doc, and just pass it along, it, 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 it'd, really be, uh, it'd really be helpful. Um, uh, I want to talk about HUD, HUD and, and VA just for a second because I serve on the banking committee. We deal with, these, with, with HUD on the banking committee. What, do you guys know what the homeless... How many homeless vets you have in, in, in your reservation? Any idea? Is it 100? Is it 500? Is it 1,000? 
I wouldn't know the specific numbers in our particular reservation. I, I, I see homeless uh, individuals that we have out there. And then, of course, you're from Montana. Um, when we address homelessness uh, at home at Fort Berthold, it's, there's two ways to look at it. There's winter and non-winter time. Yeah. And we're usually preoccupying our times and uh, trying to trying to uh, provide shelter, right. trying to make sure that they're safe and that they don't freeze to death and they're homeless in, in the winter and it's below 20, minus 20. But at the same time, uh, I know we're working hard to try to record that on how many of them are actually veterans and how many are not. Yeah, how, how about you, uh, Councilman? Senator Tester, thank you for that question. Um, this is really hard to, a hard number to track down because of the fact of uh, you have some veterans that if they move home, there is no adequate housing. They're going to move in with their family members. And a lot of these numbers are extremely unreported. Um, so to knock on the door and ask how many people, you, you know, hey, how many people are you living in your home? You're not going to get an accurate Thank number. You. I mean, that that's exactly the point. You've got people that are homeless. Then you've got people who are living generations in the same house that if if there wasn't that culture to bring people in, they'd be homeless too. And, and I would just say that I know it's not in the purview of this committee, but the HUD VASH vouchers are really, really important. And I bet you if we if we doubled them from what you get now, you'd probably utilize every damn one of them and then, and then a bunch more. Look, I, I want to thank you all for being here. I didn't get a chance to talk to you. IHS, we will. Don't worry about that. And I just want to thank you very much for, for what you guys do every day and look forward to working with you to improve the situation. Thank you.